The Challenger 2 is heading to the front line. After completing training in Britain, this fierce and much anticipated battle tank is already plowing over Ukrainian soil. Even Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov didn't pass on the opportunity this week to take it for a test drive. Thank you very much from Ukraine to the United Kingdom. The news of the arrival of the Challenger was, however, accompanied by some turbulence, because in addition to the actual tank, Britain is sending so-called depleted uranium shells. That in return has caused Russian President Vladimir Putin and his friends in the Kremlin to ring the alarm bells. Most recently, the ex-president and vice-chairman of the Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, even warned of a nuclear apocalypse. And Putin personally announced that he wants to deploy nuclear weapons on the territory of its neighbor, Belarus, which shares a border also with Poland and Ukraine. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week it's about depleted uranium, about the Challenger 2, and as always, sadly, it's also about Russia. So, let's begin. Firstly, the most important question. Why is Britain sending depleted uranium ammunition to Ukraine, and why is it so controversial? Well, as already mentioned, this has to do with the Challenger 2. The Challenger 2 is considered a highly effective tank, and definitely an upgrade to what Ukraine has been using so far. There is, however, one problem, or let's call it an issue, and it's about the most essential component of the tank, the barrel. As one of the few modern tanks, the Challenger 2 has a so-called rifled barrel. This means that the inside is lined with grooves that twist around in a spiral form. It's the same system that a lot of artillery guns use. It gives the projectile a rotation around its own axis. This is a little unusual in a modern tank. Just as a comparison, the Leopard 2, the Israeli Merkava and the Abrams use a smooth barrel, so why did the British stick to the rifled version? Well, because it stabilizes the flight trajectory and increases the range. The Challenger 2 supposedly holds the record for the longest distance tank kill in history, destroying an Iraqi tank at a range of over 4,000 meters during the Gulf War. But the rifled barrel also slows down the projectile. And this is where depleted uranium ammunition comes into play. Most armor-penetrating ammunition that tanks use to fight other tanks are so-called kinetic energy penetrators, or KEP. It means that there is no explosive charge, but it works exactly like a spear or a dart. The effect is maximized by concentrating the force into as small an area as possible. And because of the barrel of the Challenger 2, the tank might have some problems penetrating the armor of more modern Russian tanks, like the T-90 or the T-14 Armata. Now, the Ukrainians are hoping that this concern will be solved with depleted uranium shells, for those who don't know, depleted uranium is a byproduct of enriched uranium which is used in nuclear reactors, weapons and fuel. It's called depleted because it has less of the highly radioactive isotope uranium-235 than natural uranium. But even though it's less radioactive, it's still very very dense and relatively cheap to produce, making it an attractive material for armor-piercing shells and bullets. So again, the EU ammunition should be effective against heavily armored targets like the Russian T-90 or T-14 Armata tank, because its high density means that it can penetrate through thick armor with ease. This ammunition also gets so hot when it's fired that it starts to burn, and once it penetrates, it creates a spray of ultra-hot toxic particles that can even ignite fuel or ammunition inside the target. It is essentially a metal dart fired at an extraordinarily high speed that also burns and sparks. And for Ukraine, there is no real reason why they should not use anything they can to defend their territory as long as it doesn't clearly violate the international law of war. Now to the second why. Why is Russia so angry about this, so angry to the point that if you believe Moscow, this step by Britain is provoking a nuclear conflict? It's kind of ironic on a couple of levels. As already explained, the nuclear element of this ammunition, if you will, is not the actual weapon. The only reason it's used is to make it denser and heavier. And secondly, officials of the White House and British government have both accused Russia of actually using depleted uranium ammunition themselves. Now, to stay fair, this kind of ammunition is of course not without danger. No ammunition in the world is safe. It is meant to be dangerous, that's the whole point. But even the IAEA states that depleted uranium is more accessible as a toxic or chemical threat rather than a radioactive one. There have been some health damages recorded after the use of this ammunition, for example in Iraq. In high concentrations in the body, uranium can cause kidney failure and other things. But, and this cannot be stressed enough, if you are a Russian soldier sitting in a tank somewhere in Ukraine and you get hit by a Challenger 2, driven by Ukrainian soldiers shooting depleted uranium projectiles at you, I guarantee you, your worry at that moment is not that maybe... maybe. 
you will get sick in a couple of years because you were exposed. Your biggest worry in that moment is that you will most probably die a violent and horrible fiery death because you decided it was a good idea to invade your neighbor. Of course, Russia doesn't care about the fate of their soldiers. They care about making a scandal and using anything they can to feed their narrative. So it's not about facts, it's about politics. And politics, according to the Kremlin, are best made by sowing fear, anger and confusion. Ответственность за разжигание украинского конфликта, за эскалацию, за рост числа его жертв полностью лежит на западных элитах и, конечно, на киевском режиме сегодняшнем. After suspending the START agreement in February, for those of you who don't know, the START agreement is a treaty between Russia and the USA that limits the nuclear capacities of both countries. Last weekend, Putin himself spoke out and announced in a conversation with his TV court reporter Pavel Sarubin that he wanted to station tactical nuclear weapons in neighboring Belarus. Moscow has already converted 10 fighter jets of the Belarus Air Force for the use of nuclear weapons and handed over Iskander missile systems. It was also announced that from April 3 onwards, the Russian army will train Belarus crews and by 1st of July it will set up a special storage facility for tactical nuclear weapons. This is the first time Putin has spoken so concretely about moving nuclear weapons to Belarusian territory. At the same time, he said Russian nukes, however, are meant to stay under Russian control. There could be no question of handing over nuclear weapons to the Belarusian government, he stressed. So, once again, Russia doesn't seem to have thought this one through. It's a risky move that brings very little reward. Instead, it just increases the global threat level for everyone on this planet. A global nuclear conflict would also be the end of Russia, just as a reminder if anyone over there is listening. Otherwise, thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we hope you enjoyed our video.